Did you see Coming to America? I did. Hard swallow. I yes. Did. We're going to be real and we're going to get flowers. We're going to be flowers and be real. You know what yeah. I mean? First, Nostalgia shout out cover. to Leslie Jones. Big shout out to her. Great role. Merkin. Big shout outs. Jermaine Fowler, another star, managed by one of our partners. Big shout out to him for being in it. It's a big role. We congratulate you. Now to the movie. That shit was trash. <laughs> Sorry. I love the I love the, the 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 best part was the nostalgia and the and the the, the makeup, right? Cool. Was but it? yeah, nah, 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 nah. The makeup was way heavy. It Wait, so it, was, heavy. it wasn't Rick Baker. It was really heavy. It was, was very heavy handed and like a very prosthetic full head, which is like probably how they cut down on time, maybe because it's a full just put a whole face on type thing and just glue it around, maybe. But man, it looked very heavy and very just not real, you know, just very fake. The know. only one who pulled it off, believe it or not, was Arsenio and the barber, and then Eddie, and then the other guy, Sweets. Sweets pulled it off. Sweets still looked the same. Sweets just looked like yeah. an older version of Sweets. Yeah. You know, I like that they gave him more lines. I like, you know, I like that they tried, but I don't like the way they did it. It seems like they had a whole bunch of things they wanted to do, and then they just, all right, some of my best pieces of, of work that I like is when someone took all the things they wanted to see and found a way to work mm -hmm. it in. Right. But when that goes wrong, is this. Right. When you right. take all the things you want to see and you find it with, oh, McDonald's in the beginning. No, I don't want to see McDonald's in the beginning like that. I need to find a no, better holistic way to introduce McDonald's. funny in the McDonald's. second scene, yeah. You know, know what I mean? funny in the second scene, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Where's Samuel L. Jackson cameo as the robber reformed? You know what I'm saying? Where, where is that? Like, you, you got to get How about where is shooting in Queens at all? That's what killed me, number one. I don't care about fucking about fake Wakanda. Rick Ross's house. Where they from? Zamunda. I don't want Rick Ross in my coming to America. Yo, bro, that was horrible with a with an African accent, bro. They had Rotini, aka the shiesty dude from Power Dre. Oh, what's up, King? Yo, play up. Get out of here, West, Wesley Snipes. Come on, Wesley. Big Way overhanded. Big swing and a miss. Heavy handed. Way too heavy handed. Way too. Way too heavy handed. Uh, the queen to be guy. I'm just grateful he's alive. How about that? I was just happy to see his face. Same with James. But why didn't they give me the queen to be? I didn't. I didn't need what a man remixed. Yeah. What was that? That. What? And then you didn't have Dawn. You don't got Dawn. You got three of them, not four. You still can't get Dawn. You what, can't what, pay Dawn all, enough. Was in vogue in the first joint? No. That's what I'm saying. What no. the fuck? No. No, why? 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 Yo, why? Was, and then honestly, shout out to Jermaine. You were in the movie, but yo, bro, that shit was whack as fuck, bro. <laughs> I was like, don't give him no serious scenes. Lion whiskers. Lion whiskers. Don't give him no serious scenes. He got a strong no. jawline, bro. Why is he the kid of Eddie Murphy's kid? You know, real strong jawline. Real strong. Leslie was funny. Yeah. And Tracy Morgan was funny. And it seems like we're homering for SNL people, but we're not. They were actually funny. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. Like, and Eddie was funny in, in moments. Eddie did his thing. I like the fact that. Arsenio was funny. Arsenio, Arsenio was funny. definitely did. I didn't think Arsenio was funny as semi. I thought he was funny as all the, the roles he played. You yes. know, the voodoo guy, you know, Randy yes. Watson was, I mean, the, the, the semi the look was just too weird. Who? I don't know what they were doing with his look. The but semi the voodoo look. guy? No, the semi look. Oh, yes. The, the face. Yeah, yeah, he the looked good as the flashback. Right. When they flashed him back, he looked like he could have looked been, looked back then. Right. I dug that. I Listen, I dug the Leslie Jones inter integration. I'm going to be honest. I dug the go back in time. Oh, that night he did hook up with the girl. Like they got certain things right. But it was like they were jamming too much stuff in to get it completely like they were better off making coming to america a mini series like four episodes four hours where we could really go in and we can get zamunda for an episode we can get queens for an episode and a half you know what i mean but like the warlord with the the dancing soldiers why cut bro it, cut it out that was horrible what that, was that supposed to even be i don't even understand the shake weights when they're working out like i get it was supposed to be funny but it wasn't man it, it just oh, wasn't man. It wasn't. Oh, and and what it lead me, leads me to believe is that if you don't make the best sequels that are always made, 
are generally made immediately after the first one, like within a three, four year span. I think Bad Boys 2 is the only one that had like more than five years between it that was actually a good sequel. You know what I mean? Because you need that energy still molding. You can't do season one of Keenan and come back three years later, 10 years later to do season two. It's gonna be different fucking energy. Them kids gonna be growing, everything's fucked up. I'm thinking about Atlanta. Like how long has it been since the Atlanta season dropped? You know what I mean? Apparently they're gonna film two seasons at once. That's their whole goal, to do two seasons now at once. That's it's been a be while. Flavor. Like they got to reestablish a whole flavor. Yes. Like Lakeith Stanfield just got nominated for an Oscar. He was on that show, right? Yes. So he's gone from That's a television known. show to an Oscar and he's supposed to come back and be normal. I don't know how I, well that's going to work. I'm um, luckily for him. He's a weird, luckily for them. He's, he's a, a weird motherfucker. So. Yeah. No, but he's but a weird I mean, fucker. He'll just sink right in into try. it. He'll be cleaning his nails. Not I hope so. I mean, but now you like Donald, like his childish Gambino, who's, you know, has a hundred million dollar deal at Amazon. I heard. You know what I mean? Like, how hard are they gonna come back to that TV show? You know. Apparently, they wrote they wrote the two seasons. Apparently, I think they're gonna just, they're gonna do two seasons, and that's gonna be it. Maybe you get a fifth, but they're exactly. gonna do two more, and that's it. And then knock it out at the same time, and hope they can just keep the magic for that two seasons. Like, I hope they can do it because they. I think they their fans deserve it because they propped that show up and blew it up. Because the Chappelle show, even though they came back shortly after season three, wasn't as good as season two. And that was part of the reasons why he stopped it. The shit ain't as good. Like, I'm not rolling with this. Season three wasn't there. But no, they did season three. They had a couple episodes he did. And he noticed they weren't good. And he was like, yo, chill. And they're like, no, keep going. He's like, yo, fuck you. I'm out. Like, oh, yeah. They were trying to push the subpar no, work I think that he they knew was subpar. had that shit in the can already or whatever. And then they tried to just do season three after he dipped already. Really? That wasn't stuff he did? It was stuff that he did. Oh, that was from the cutting room floor. That he, yeah. Oh, I always he thought that was stuff that he filmed there. like new. I was like, damn, he really wasn't in it. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that the tone was that off that quickly. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Because like, that shit was like, Phew! they were cranking. Season two, they just did fucking Charlie uh, Murphy. Charlie Murphy, but also like at the end of the season, they just did Wayne Brady. You know what I'm saying? So they were headed in a direction that I don't think they could have derailed and put that on TV. That quickly. They couldn't find, I don't think so, no. Got I you. think that was just some bullshit they tried to like put together to start the season to see if they could get him back while it's rolling or whatever. And then he never came back. So they put, you know, Charlie and, and uh, Donnell up there for a couple and then they just let it go because the story just got too big that he wasn't coming back and blah, blah, blah. You got to keep them. You got to keep them sequels rolling. You can't spend 30 years between a sequel. You know, it's like, you know, what coming to America 30, is interesting. 30 for me? years. Has any, has any other sequel been 30 years in the making? The odd Couple, maybe. Remember when the Odd Couple did the part two? No, I mean, you remember the Odd Couple did like the part two when they had Margaret and it was like, they hadn't been on TV for like 30 years. And then, but the movie was good. Hmm. No, was it was it the Odd Couple? No, Grumpy Old Men. It was Grumpy Old Grumpy Men. Grumpy Old Men. So, but so it wasn't a sequel. You're right. It was just a whole other movie. Uh, Damn. Nah, nah. Thirty years in between the sequel. No, and then the, the problem is with Coming to America is so fucking genius. And Ivan Reitman, and everyone made it. They should have just rebooted it. The complete yes. like new cast and, and those guys like get like a cameo a homage or some shit like that or. I I don't I don't know, man. They should have just spent the money outside of Rick Ross House. That's all I know. <laughs> they filmed it at Rick Ross House. I hate the fact that I have to even talk about the fact that I saw a sequel to my favorite movie ever, and it's t- awful. Shout out to Rick Ross, though. He tried. You know, if they call, you know, I'd, I'd be in the movie too if they called me. So, you know, we love the boss over here. <laughs> but, that, yeah, man. it was a whack movie. <laughs> Yeah, man, I wouldn't desecrate coming to America with my presence if I was a rapper and not an actor. Craig Brewer, you fucked up. You fucked yeah, up, Craig Brewer. Big fucking time. Straight up. That's why they all folded that shit to Amazon. They said, how much? Yeah, we pay 80 for this. How much y'all willing to give us? 125? Yeah, you can take that right now. Thank you. Right now. Out the door. Bye. Thank you. And we'll promote you. it, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Eddie is funnier telling stories about the first time he met Paul Mooney on the Seth Meyers show than he was throughout that entire movie. Hundred percent. It was it was really bad. It was, it was very bad. Not good. It was not good. And shame on them. You know what I mean for not having anybody around to 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 be able to tell that this fucking tone is off. That there's no funny coming, or get in Eddie's ass and make him be funny and tell him he's not being funny and what the fuck or 
whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, what 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 kind of camp is that? You gonna fuck around and do Dolomite right and do coming to America wrong? What kind of fucking sense do that make? I don't know. They needed the whole Wayans family there in the writing room. The whole family. Yeah, man. Every single Everybody. one of them. It is some real motherfuckers in the room. Like, yo, this shit not funny. Y'all not making me laugh. That shit is corny. That shit is this, that, and the other. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah, please. Please. All right. Let's 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 move on. All right. Um, at the risk of alienating some people, I have to do a quick breakdown of something that that I I have I, I struggle with when dealing with people in day to day life. One of our one of our know it alls was like you know. Tani uses the word retarded and, you know, that's, that's off-putting. And I, I respect that person's agency. So uh, I try not to use that word, but this is a situation where I have to be completely honest in my parable here in my little analogy. There's a difference between retarded smart motherfuckers and smart retarded motherfuckers. Let me tell you right now. Okay. A retarded smart motherfucker is someone who's smart, but be doing dumb shit like parolee smart as fuck does dumb shit all the time little dumb shits you're like how could you be this retarded if you're this smart bro you are an analyst on wall street bro how could you fundamentally be this dumb you get what i mean that's a retarded smart motherfucker now a smart retarded motherfucker is a retarded guy who tries to do smart shit those are the ones you got to watch out for the shiesty ones the guys who think they're maneuvering but it's like they think they're dodging bullets but in reality they're just doing this <laughs> what are you doing? You dumbass! Who, who, you fucking smart retarded motherfucker! Shut the fuck up, bro! It's the word. I don't think it's the context. I know. You know that. I know it's the word, but it's just, it's, there's no better way to explain it. I'm not talking about someone with Down syndrome with men, mental, mental issues on that level. I'm talking about basic stupidity. You know what I mean? Childhood retarded. I'm not talking about it in the, in the mental capacity, Special it's Olympics way, because I respect slope. those people's agencies. It's a slippery slope. It's the same word. It's the same thing with the N word. It's like, I'm not talking about black people. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking about N words in general. You know what I mean? It's, it's just not good. Some of those words just need to be laid to rest. I mean, I guess so. I mean, I guess so. Listen, I listener, I respect your agency, but I had, I had, to, I had, to, I had people had to understand the difference because they're going to go out and realize, wow, you, there is a difference. Some people are fundamentally smart and they do dumb shit. Some people are fundamentally dumb and they think they're doing smart shit. But you see how you just phrase that without using that word. That's I hate what you. They would prefer. I, I know. hate you. I, hate I know. You. I hate you. You're trying to make me a better me, and I hate you. I mean. Hate me all you want, but we are going to make you a wonderful, wonderful human being. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. 20 years later, I'm like, yes, I'm reformed. I used to call people retarded, N-words, everything. Now join me in my church of mathematician, like Scientology. Okay. But we got numbers. Come join us. It's not a cult. I promise you. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your social security, your bank account number, and all your deepest, darkest secrets. Don't worry. <laughs> it's not a cult. What kind of hustle is that? 